Jorg Widmer uh, is the cinematographer for the new Terrence Malick film, A Hidden Life. Uh, and Terrence Malick has uh, always been known for his distinctive visual style. Uh, and you've previously worked with Malick as a camera operator on several of his uh, projects. Uh, what was it like working with him as a cinematographer this time around? Didn't change so much since we know each other quite well. And uh, I was uh, pleased to uh, get the call and take uh, read this the book on which everything is based, so the letters between Franz and Fanny Jägerstätte, who lived uh, a rural life as a farmer in Austria. And uh, Terry asked me if I could read it, but I think, and then he, he's, later he sent the script, and uh, he wanted to make a movie about uh, some people who are heroes, but never would be... Uh, remembered as heroes in the in the big picture of the history, so he wanted to make something about the little, or the the smaller heroes, the non known heroes, which was quite exciting because uh, he wanted to shoot it in Europe, and uh, the story is based on true events, and uh, since we know how to approach such a story with Terry, uh, I was pretty amazed. I'm very happy to be asked. Uh, and uh, the story, uh, as you mentioned, uh, is about uh, an objector during, uh, you know, the World War II who uh, refuses to fight for the Nazis um, and is is subsequently punished for it. Um, what, what did you what do you want to bring to that story visually? Uh, it, it's it feels almost mythic to a certain point. The way it's captured his story, his life, his uh, his inner life, even uh, visualized. I mean, basically, the story is uh, divided in three parts. Where in the beginning, you see uh, the wonderful life of the people in the mountains and uh, friends with his family and his wife and a lot of love and and uh, the kids cavorting in the hills and playing, uh, being playful. And then he has to go to the army and train. And it's not yet uh, that he has to go to war, but it's already the training which. Uh, puts a little bit um, the Jonas Singh of going back home uh, and uh, so part two is basically when he has to get, start training and gets uh, separated from his from his family and uh, part three is when he gets sentenced and then it's only Jonas Singh of uh, for his family where they are at home and it's all about these this images where he remembers how it was life, the good life in the mountains was and it was a very simple life and they have been working as farms but there was a matter of harmony and it was about them um, being happy together and uh, basically it's a, it's a Greek tragedy that <clears throat> uh, Franz doesn't have a choice, so he either goes to war and dies, or shoots innocent people, or he sticks to his his uh, beliefs and and uh, goes to goes to be executed. So he has, has he doesn't have a choice, and so um, every image in this story has in a way a meaning because if you see his face and then you see trees or nature or the, the creek in flowing water or it's all about these images he had in in the past and uh, it's the very metaphorical approach of shooting a movie so it's it's more often that you see something which no, if that you show something which doesn't really tell the story, but by uh, it's it's about this about um, telling the story by the unseen. So you don't show punishment, you don't show uh, f um, violence. You just show images which ima which let you imagine the violence, uh, especially in the in the end, where you don't see the execution, but <clears throat> you see images which make you suffer because you know what's happening behind these these walls. Now the, uh, the the scenes you're shooting sort of range from these really beautiful scenic shots, landscape shots in his in his village um, and then he 
you know, it's taken into this very interior world uh, of, of prison, at, uh, you know, after he's uh, he's uh, uh, punished for uh, uh, defying the Nazis. Um, what's the approach like, you know, as a cinematographer to those very different circumstances that the character is in, uh, you know, not just where the character is mentally, but just capturing the physical reality of, of that world? The harmony in the beginning means uh, you follow uh, the cover art and kids, you follow, you see them at work, you see, you make it a little bit brighter in a way. So uh, you choose places where uh, the sun is obvious and where uh, you always feel that nature is a, uh, has a brightness and, and uh, makes them feel comfortable. In the prison scenes, you have places where it's incredibly dark. And this is a good thing about working with Terry because he lets you do this. So it's almost uh, to to be um, doesn't expose anymore. <laughs> there are parts of it which are really dark, and so it shows the dark places. And uh, therefore, nature, the all these these back flashes, they are even more uh, obvious than they would. In, without these contrasts. So it's all about, it's not so much, with Terry, it's not so much about lighting because you have to follow all, you have always to follow the actors, but it's about creating contrast and to create darkness. So it's more shadowing than lighting, especially in the prison scenes. And uh, the approach is that uh, with Terry, he, he gives you a lot of freedom as a, for, as a playground, but on the other hand, he uh, you have always to be prepared to follow the unexpected because it doesn't give too many restrictions to the actors either. So you have to uh, find a place where you set the scene, but then the actors may do what you don't expect. And you have to be prepared for this. For example, they go into a building which you haven't prepared, so you have to have a lighting crew which follows immediately with the blacks and, and makes it that it looks the way you want it to look. And so it's a lot of uh, being flexible and be, be, being prepared and not spending too much time for preparation because the moment which is not prepared is the maybe the better one. So. And uh, yeah, working with these actors, so much of the story is also taking place on the actors' faces. Uh, uh, there are a lot of really evocative close-ups in the film. Um, you know, is that, you know, because, you know, obviously, as you mentioned, you know, you're sort of trying to be flexible and with actors, you sort of, that's the most important thing because, you know, landscapes don't move, but actors obviously do. Um, so, like, what was that like working with the actors to, to capture uh, uh, what they were doing and, 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 and just get the most out of those performances in terms of what you were communicating to the audience? So the actors, uh, they had to learn to be farmers. They had to learn to use the tools. They needed to know a little bit about crops, about uh, using a scythe, how, how to harvest, how to treat animals. On the other hand, uh, they had a lot of, during one take, they had a lot of times, which means that since we were shooting digital, uh, the, I think the longest take was 43 minutes long. They had to have. They had the chance to find out how they do it. So it's what was not so much about the lines which they were saying. It's a scripted movie, nevertheless. But uh, they could improvise and they could uh, do it one more time or do it uh, say different lines. And um, since we are shooting so much footage, it's what, it didn't matter which part of it would be taken in the end. It, it, it which should be the most believable and the the most intense part of the take, which would, which will, would make it into the movie. So that's, uh, they embraced it, they liked it, because for the first time they didn't perform, they uh, felt being the character, which he said, uh, which they said, the two of them, it was an incredible feeling. And, uh, you know, working with those, uh, you know, long takes and more improvisational style, was that uh, a, a very different experience for you uh, at, behind the camera from other, you know, films you, you, you shot? Yeah, usually you'd have a movie which is scripted, then you start with a scene and you have a reverse shot and this, the scene takes probably two minutes and 
is, is uh, divided by the editing because you have the reverse shot. And, uh, the reverse shot. In this uh, movie, we don't necessarily have a because uh, already the dialogue happens in one scene, and if it doesn't, then it may be in voiceover or it may uh, made differently. So it's very much about the visual, and it's very much about this uh, metaphysical uh, uh, images which we shoot as well, and uh, therefore it's it's a different way of approaching a movie. It's very bad. You it's just to find the right expressions for for the inner life of the actors or for the characters. In uh, the way this uh, the film uses close ups and also its story of um a you know sort of religious conviction uh, kind of reminded me uh, of the Passion of Joan of Arc while I was watching it and uh, I was wondering if that was an inspiration for you or or if you had other <laughs> inspirations for uh, that that yeah you know, for of imagery uh, and or films that. Uh, inspired you uh, in making this film? It was not so much about just having seen other films, it was much more about the vision of Terry or, or the ideas of Terry, which are based on philosoph philosophical ideas and also on uh, on his ideas of making a movie. So you always make a movie for the director or the, you may always make the director's movie and if you work with a different director, you may find other ways of shooting it. So for Terry, it's very important that you see like the eyes in his imagination would see, which means you see a lot. It's not that the, uh, the cinematographer or the camera uh, chooses a, a place where you want to have the audience looked at. It gives you this, the choice to look everywhere and to find something. So if you have a, an actor in the foreground, you may find people crossing in the background and he wants to have this visible and he wants to have this also in focus, so you can always choose where you want to look at. And it's like in real life when you look at somebody and, and in the in the area behind you see somebody crossing, you think about, oh, what's he, what is he doing? Why you watch the foreground person? And that's his approach of, of uh, how cinematography should serve his way of uh, observation. And so, the film... Therefore, we shoot with kind of short lenses, which is also very unusual, and deep stops. So it's it's really so. In, in general, there are three principles: it's shooting short lenses, uh, shooting without filters, or maybe four, uh, shooting against the brightness. Um, if you're lucky, the sun in Europe you don't have always, sun, but uh, at least brightness. So create something which is comes from the dark into the bright, and uh, then. Yeah, giving the act and then giving the actors the freedom to move wherever, no, not wherever they want. But you can still give directions, but basically don't restrict them too much. So if they want to move fast, be prepared to move fast. Things like this. Was there uh, any particular scenes uh, or shots that were uh, especially challenging mm -hmm. to to shoot, or that you were especially proud of having captured? Uh, for example, when Fanny, uh, you saw the movie, so you know what I'm talking about. Especially if we, if, when they separate, when when he goes to the military, and uh, we follow the the couple, and then the Franz enters the train, and we follow them until the very end, and Fanny stays alone when she is in the on the in the station. So this is something which wasn't uh, so we never rehearsed it so it's just uh, let's find out what's going to happen <laughs> and then we found this uh so it's i think it expresses so much the her suffering from being separated from him and you see in the take you see a lot so it was shut um with i think emotionally it makes a lot of it's a very very important moment <laughs> Or the entire scene of the execution, which I like very much. Not the execution, but the, how it's told, because you don't see anything which happens, but you feel it from from outside. The, the uh, friends, he uh, he helps to to make uh, it easier for his fellow, and then he goes by himself through the gate, and uh, you know what is happening. You see in then uh, you see the nature creeping in, but also through. The windows, which are not uh, which are not clear, but but um, opal, 
Opak. And then you see nature coming in from the rooftop, and then you see a curtain which is open, then you see the guillotine, and you see these weird people who are managing the whole procedure, and you see that it's kind of a factory, and it makes you so sad that, that I, every time when I see it again, I want to cry. It's really such emotional impact which it has. I have seen it only once, I have seen it a couple of times uh, to, for the grading, and I was already very touched and by this by this scene and when I saw it with sound I was just blown away because it's so emotionally so strong without showing anything and then I think this is one of the most uh, the most important characters of a Terry who is a great director but he doesn't show anything but he f makes you feel uh, so many things which aren't shown but you know it every single detail which happens down there and others other directors which i like as well they show it but you don't need to show it it's incredible emotional and uh, you're also uh working on uh terence malick's uh, next film the last planet uh which uh tells a story about uh, uh jesus christ so it's another you know uh, religious subject matter uh is there anything you can tell us about that if anything uh, so far yeah, we have uh, the same approach again. So we have we shoot, we shoot with the same lenses, we shoot with the same camera, we find already the, the same settings and uh, the same. Uh, it's an exploration of of uh, how to tell emotions and how to tell the story and how uh, to embrace nature when it rains, it rains when the sunshine. Uh, find the right places. So. Uh, it, from an exterior point of view, it seems to be kind of similar uh, and for our collaboration. And uh, it, again, it follows a script, but it will be, I think it will be very philosophical and very deep. It's not telling uh, the Bible again. It's about a philosophical approach uh, to, to this issue. Well, I want to uh, congratulate you on uh, A Hidden Life um, and, and wish you the best of luck on The Last Planet. Um, and thank you so much for, for talking to me today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.